What is going on Diablo 2 fans, Dobrunsky here. In today's video, I want to make a guide on how to successfully play a summoning druid through normal difficulty and into nightmare. I've had a lot of requests since I started making PTR videos. Like I made a ton, I think I made like 45 or 50 or something in 30 days. All of the videos were end game stuff and I did even do tier lists of the end game builds, but I have had a lot of requests to sort of talk a little bit about the leveling experience and how some of these new builds actually work on playthrough. So today I wanna to go through the summoning druid now to be honest this is actually a pretty solid build to get through normal and into nightmare you can have a combination of solid physical damage crowd control cold and fire at the same time yes you basically are covered with everything and the play style of just kind of sitting back and having your summons do the work it is relatively safe so it's not the fastest leveling build for a druid but i do think it's something different and fun and hopefully you guys enjoyed this video again I'm gonna have timestamps in the description below i'm gonna show you kind of how i would spec sort of a late normal druid and then i'm going to show some clips of a playthrough from twitch where you can kind of see the scaling power from like Indariel to durial to mephisto to diablo to bale so hopefully you guys enjoy this video again if you do enjoy this youtube content i do stream twice a week on twitch and got the link for my twitch channel in the description below so any follows on that platform would be very much appreciated that being said guys let's jump in so like i mentioned in the intro i just want to do a quick overview of a late normal kind of just entering nightmare difficulty summoning druid and what you kind of expect in terms of damage now i do want to point out one big disclaimer here is that there has been a lot of feedback to allow summoning druids to summon all of their minions so having ravens dire wolves spirit wolves and bears out at the same time with possibly two spirits now i just want to say that that change might actually be implemented i don't know i can't predict the future but if that change is implemented everything that i'm going to cover in this video is exactly the same the only difference is that in addition to summoning these groups of summons that i have just make sure that you also have a grizzly bear and dire wolves active at the same time besides that it's exactly the same so starting off with the attributes kind of like any playthrough i have enough into strength to equip some gear nothing into dexterity i have a handful of points into mana just or energy just to have some extra mana and then everything else is put into vitality so 433 life, but that's before my Oak Sage kicks in because just one hard point and I get plus 30% life. I think that's really important because it does provide my Druid as well as my summons with a pretty big substantial life bonus. Now for the skill tree, as you're leveling, I would just simply follow this route. I just really do think it's the best. Just due to the fact that there's immunities and you don't want to focus entirely on one type of damage like physical or cold, for example. That's something that you're really only going to encounter like progressing into Nightmare into Hell difficulty. But I just went back and forth by putting one point into Raven, one point into Summer Spirit Wolf. And I just went back and forth just in that same kind of pattern, which nets me at level 28. I have five Ravens that have 26 hits at 103 to 148 damage apiece. That's a decent amount of damage. And then on top of that, I have five Wolves that are doing 30 to 34 cold damage apiece. So if I run into a Physical Immune, I have cold damage from Spirit Wolves. If I run into a cold immune, I can handle it with the physical immunes, or excuse me, with the physical damage of the ravens. And then again, one hard pointed Oak Sage to buff their damage. Now here's kind of the kicker, which I thought was kind of cool, is that I found somewhat of a use for one of the Axe Mercenaries through a playthrough. I just have Stealth and Ancient's Pledge on him, so he has capped out res, nothing else. I mean, I could put, I don't know, eventually a Spirit Sword and some sort of helmet to make him stronger. But right now, he just does okay damage, like 100 plus fire damage. But here's the big thing is that he does enchant myself and all of my minions. So it's extra attack rating and extra fire damage. It's not a ton at level four, but that will progress. So the combination of all the cold damage from spirit wolves, the fire from them being enchanted, plus all the physical damage from the ravens does do a pretty good job of taking out stuff in nightmare difficulty. Like I said, I'm just 28. This is if I just beat hell difficulty, just kind of moving to do the den of evil, which I'll quickly do. And then I will show a level, like an early held difficulty with sort of the same spec. And then we'll kind of show some highlights and clips from Twitch on playthroughs. So you can kind of, ex what you can kind of expect in terms of like so damage as you're kind of making your way through the game. Hides. Now it would be good to have a teleport staff on Switch, which I don't actually have at the moment. But you can easily shop for one in normal difficulty. Act three. Now this isn't like stomping through gameplay and power, but I have like 563 life, 
my wolves have 325, plus they're hit up with the Oak Sage bonus. And then they get the extra enchant damage, that kind of thing. Slower playthrough, but this is now, I would argue, a much more viable option. And I could definitely see, you notice, I just lost my ravens, not a big deal. Maximum five, just recast them. But just imagine this, and then being able to summon, like, Heart of the Wolverine, Dire Wolves, and Summon Grizzly at the same time. I think that would make it on par with a Summon Necro. Like, Summon Necro has Corpse Explosion and Amp Damage, which you don't have, but you could have two different types of spirits, lots of life, and multiple sources of damage. So Cold and Fire. And again, like, a Teleport Staff on the offhand to get around would be really good. Like, I don't have that crazy of a gear either. It's just... This is like a fire druid that I converted, so leaf, stealth, random stuff, FCR rings, perfect ruby, two open socket, random rare druid pelt that I found. Just enough to basically just get through. And the wolves have a 400% attack rating bonus due to like the changes in the synergy tree and that's before like they get the additional buff up from enchant so again i really think that they came close with the changes that they made to the druid and if we just get a little bit more in terms of like being able to summon multiple minions two spirits i think it's right there Some of ravens. Not sure how many more we have to go here. Okay, five remaining monsters. So again, like this is not Fire Druid would be faster. That's there's no disputing that. But it's not like you're having any close calls with this setup at all. The three remaining. They're probably up near the top corner. Anyways, that's good enough for an idea. Not a full den clear, but now we'll jump to a level 60 druid. So this is as if I was just entering hell difficulty. Similar setup, and then I'll show you guys kind of the clear speed you can expect with that. And then I'll show you guys some highlights from my normal playthrough on Twitch. So as far as the Hell version of a Summoning Druid, not a lot honestly changes. The same attribute specs, so you're still going enough strike to equip your gear, mostly vitality, some points into energy if you want more mana. Yada yada yada, the same attribute spec for like any build. But you do have some extra skill points to play around with when you start to get some plus skill gear. So Lore and a Helmet, Spirit and a Monarch Shield, Spirit and a Sword, maybe Rain for a Body Armor. All that I have on this spec is just the Spirit Crystal Sword. So again, we're still very budget, but the shape-shifting skill tree, with a couple hard points, you can really add some extra survivability to your Druid. So with one hard point in Lycanthropy, Werebear, and Shockwave, you get Stun Control. You also get a ton of max life. So 105% from Werebear, plus an additional 30% from Lycanthropy, plus 40% from Oak Sage. So just a ton of extra life. Now you might be wondering, why wouldn't you want to shape-shift into Werebear in a normal playthrough? When you don't have a lot of plus skills on your gear, it's like every 40 seconds you're shape-shifting back and forth. So if you want that extra tedious gameplay, you could do it. I don't think it's needed for normal. And then on top of that, you lose the ability to tele-stomp with a magic staff that has teleport charges. So it's just something to be aware of when you shift into hell difficulty, is that you're going to get a lot of extra plus life, but you're going to lose your ability to tele-stomp. So it's up to you if you want to make that choice but just a ton of extra plus life. And I do, depending on the area that I'm farming or moving into in Hell Difficulty, I will actually start to summon some Dire Wolves. That's because there's a ton of cold immune monsters in like the Blood Moor when you're starting to progress. But when you run into physical immune monster, switch to Spirit Wolves for cold damage. And then when you're just kind of making your way through like fire immunes and that, just rely on physical damage and use Dire Wolves. But I'll just shapeshift to Werebear. You can see I have 1800 plus life. Let me just provide some shockwave crowd control support and let our summons do their job. 
And again, I sound like a broken record. If we could get to the point where we didn't have to pick between different summons, this build would be even stronger. So again, multiple spirits. But you get the idea. We'll do part of the Den of Evil. You just constantly shapeshift back and forth. I just stun everything. A lot of cold immunes here. And again, if you run into physical immune, just summon some spirit wolves. And we're not setting any speed records. We're just relying on our damage. Albeit not the best damage. Just slowly clearing. And I just... I know that I hate sound like a broken record, but I have no issue here struggling clearing. It's just... If you want to spend, like, all day clearing stuff, this might be the build for you. So, so you'll see in the Twitch clips that the normal playthrough was very powerful. But again, once you start to move in Hell Difficulty, things start to kind of slow down. But again, kind of the progression. I am only level 63 into Hell Difficulty. As soon as I start to get more plus skills, and I can continue to invest more points into, like, Dire Wolf and Summon Grizzly, I'll get more damage. Because they're only 100 to 142 is the Dire Wolves. And I have about 600 damage with the Ravens. There's just no threat of dying. But this is all I'm basically going to show, guys. So, again, like, totally dog mercenary. This is a Holy Freeze variant. Might would be a better choice if you want to use Dire Wolves. Holy Freeze is good for crowd control if you're using Spirit Wolves. Because, like I said, if I summon a bunch of Spirit Wolves, these guys are doing 140 cold damage apiece. It's just not going to be the most effective when we're trying to clear through, like, the Den of Evil and Hell Difficulty, and there's a lot of cold enemy monsters. But it's pretty crazy that I have like 1800 plus life. And I just hear some fire me monsters. This is where we use the spirit wolves. Hey guys, that's all I'm really going to show. So now we'll switch to some Twitch clips. Again, just let me know in the comment section below if you guys like the direction that the summon druid is heading. Like I said, everything that I've showcased, this will apply to updates if they allow us to summon all the different spirits and wolves and summons at the same time. So you would just have dire wolves, spirit wolves, and a grizzly at the same time, and a second spirit. But it's the same idea. Shapeshift into werebear. Use crowd control stun support. Here's like the final mob. Just stun stuff, and then let your summons do your thing. But again, I think we're so close. That's why, like, with a couple tweaks, hopefully in the update in PTR, Things will get a little bit better. But now we'll jump to the playthrough, the normal Twitch clip highlights, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised how actually successful the summoning druid is in normal. Okay. Let's go summons. Okay. We've lost two wolves. Boom. Chad has no faith in Summon Druid. No faith! You guys have no faith! This is probably easier than a Fire Druid. No faith. Confirm, this is easier than a Fire Druid. There you go. Okay, another, like, really easy Mephisto. One wolf died against Mephisto. And I got Maelstorm 1. Two, three, four, five. Recast my summons. 50% faith. Come on, it's gonna be one Telly Stomp. It's gonna be dead.
Milk, you better than what you expected. I'm telling you, this is where the summoning druid excels over the necro, is you don't have to make corpses. You can just continue to resummon. And I can just sit here and laugh at the thousand follow challenge. Because he has no faith. Can everybody can everyone pre-prep the CAC at W? There's Diablo. Mercenary's probably gonna die. Not gonna bother trying to keep him resurrected. Ravens are putting in work. surprised at how tanky the wolves are. Like they have 325 life and then they're being buffed 30% max life from Oak Sage. But they're really tanky. How come when we how come we can't have a sword that looks like Tor uh, Talek? When we get enchanted, why doesn't our sword look like that? Come on. I want a sword like Talek. I don't think I've had a wolf die yet. Maybe I did. Did a wolf die, chat? Can everybody get ready to, uh... Check W laugh? At, uh... Thousand challenge? This is like, like, you just have to keep your man up and recast. Like the summon scale X like really well for normal, so that's where they really start to fall apart elsewhere. Hey <laughs> look, he summoned her and runs on faith. Like if I had a dire wolf, like a like a pack of dire wolves too. Now it would have been way faster to just skip these guys, but gotta say I'm impressed with my little wolves. Like, this is slow. Like, I would skip... I would normally skip these guys with the teleport staff, but...
every time that Oak Sage, he just like goes right to Bale and then he gets hit with a cold arrow. We're not setting any speed records, but... My brothers will not no! That's okay. I was like, I was wondering if we could go the whole thing without him resurrecting, uh... Hello. Mercs. Or, not Merc, uh... Clone. But, uh... Just about. I would still like to see the changes a little bit further uh, dub, but I never thought it like if they never did changes, I would never do this this playthrough. So the reason I think this is possible, I guess, is because of some of the changes they made. But Cornflake, thank you so much for the 18 months, my dude. Focus on bail. Stupid dogs. There you go. Normal bail and a summon druid. Bail, join your brothers. 